in all the devices that we studied in the last three lectures, links below, including pipes, nozzles, diffusers, throttling devices, turbines, compressors, pumps, mixing chambers, and heat exchangers, we started with the energy conservation equation, and in all cases, we wrote the change in energy over time as zero, since these were all steady state devices. But what happens if, for example, mass is coming in from one inlet into a tank, as heat is being applied to the tank, and we want to know the change in internal energy, or the change in temperature, which would be a good proxy. Well, in that case, we have what is known as a transient system, as opposed to a steady state one. Transient systems, or unsteady flow systems, are those where the change of mass or energy over time is not zero, like this. In this simple case, the change in energy with no changes in kinetic energy or potential energy would be the same as the change in internal energy, and neither would be zero. We'd only have Q dot and the mass flow rate with its enthalpy coming in only. And you can probably already see what we would do next. If the question is how much is the temperature changing, which is directly tied to the change in internal energy, du would be equal to the right hand side times dt, and we can therefore integrate to find the change in internal energy delta u. Now specifically for each case, we would have to check if the terms on the right are not changing with time, and if they're not, for example, if the heat being transferred to the tank has a constant rate, and the mass flow is coming at a constant rate and temperature, meaning constant specific enthalpy, we can just bring those out of the integral to have them multiply a delta time term. And of course, if heat, or any other one of these terms for that matter, are indeed a function of time, then you would integrate them with respect to t. In this case, you can safely assume or state that the heat transfer rate is constant, you're not increasing or decreasing the amount of heat you put into the system, that the mass flow rate is constant, you're not increasing or decreasing the flow of the substance as you push it into the system, and we can assume that the substance is coming in at the same temperature at all times, which means that the enthalpy of this substance is constant. Another concept worth pointing out here is that the integral of du is the change in u. Like I've mentioned before in multiple occasions, the d differentials are exact differentials, and therefore the path taken to get from one state to another doesn't affect the value of this integral. In this case, since the internal energy is a property that doesn't depend on the path taken, we write du, and its integral will always be the change of internal energy. If it were something like work, where we use inexact differentials delta, then the integral would in fact depend on the path of the process. Of course, to find the change in temperature or internal energy, we would have to know the time that has elapsed. More time will cause more changes. Alternatively, the common question is how much time is needed for this or that, and in that case you'd be solving for t. In general, for transient systems, we'll always care about the time, since by definition, they change over time. Now, this is probably the easiest case there is, when you can physically have, for example, a mass flow rate coming in at a constant temperature. But what if we don't have one inlet, but one exit? If the heat is still coming in, what do you think will happen to the temperature of the contents of the tank over time? They would be getting hotter, right? This means that the enthalpy of the fluid coming out is increasing over time and can therefore not be considered a constant anymore, that we can just take out of the integral. Our energy equation would look like the change of internal energy is equal to the integral of q dot n times dt minus the integral of m dot e h e dt. And now, since h e is not constant, meaning the enthalpy of the fluid flowing out is not constant, because the temperature coming out is increasing, we would have to find a way to describe h e as a function of time so that we can integrate. The first term would be fine, the integral of q dot n dt is q dot n times delta t, but for the last one, we can take m dot e out if it's still flowing steadily, but not for h e. h e would be a function of t and we'd have to integrate it. A not so accurate solution to this would be to take the average enthalpy value between the initial and the final temperature of the discharge process, but that would require us to measure the temperature itself. So if we're doing that already, if for example we just measure the temperature with a thermocouple at the exit of the tank over time, we could just use all of those data points to write an equation of how enthalpy is changing as a function of time, so that we can mathematically integrate with respect to time. We'll look at several examples in this topic so that we cover as many scenarios as possible to better understand transient systems, so make sure to check out the links in the description of this video to watch those examples.
But in general, the concept is the same for all scenarios, so let's look at a simple one where we make use of what we learned here. A 3 cubic meter rigid insulated tank initially containing saturated water vapor at 850 kilopascals is connected through a valve to a supply line that carries steam at 500 degrees Celsius. Now the valve is opened and steam is allowed to flow slowly into the tank until the pressure in the tank rises to 1.8 megapascals. At this instant, the tank temperature is measured to be 300 degrees Celsius. Determine the mass of the steam that has entered and the pressure of the steam in the supply line. As usual, pause here and try to solve this problem with what you've learned so far. From the mass balance equation, we know that the change in mass inside the tank is the final mass minus what was already in there. Or in other words, that the mass that went into the tank is the difference between the final and the initial mass. Since the volume of the tank is constant, we can find mass 1 and mass 2 by dividing that given volume by the specific volume at the initial and final conditions. Initially, for mass 1, we had the pressure and a saturated vapor, meaning that the specific volume at 1 was Vg at that pressure. As for the specific volume at state 2, we have both the pressure and the temperature. We go to the saturated mixture tables to get Vg at pressure 1, and to the superheated tables to get V2 at that pressure and temperature. With these, we can calculate the mass coming in to be 8.17 kilograms. And this also tells us how much M1 and M2 were. And now for the energy conservation, we have that the change in energy is equal to the energy that was already in the tank E1 plus the energy that came into the tank E2. The change in energy will be equal to the mass entering the tank times its specific enthalpy Hi, and we take the enthalpy here because for a flowing fluid, the pressure will be constant. Remember that for constant pressure, the associated heat is quantified by the enthalpy. As for the energy that was initially in the tank and the energy at the final state also in the tank, we have constant volume, meaning that for their energies, we consider the specific internal energy U1 and U2. For U1 and U2, we can go to the same two tables from before. The saturated mixture at 850 kilopascals, and we take U1 to be UG, and the superheated table for 1.8 megapascals and 300 degrees Celsius to get U2. With these values, we substitute them in the energy conservation equation and find that the enthalpy coming in HI is equal to 3100 kilojoules per kilogram. Knowing that the temperature is 500 degrees Celsius and that the specific enthalpy is 3100 kilojoules per kilogram, we look for a subtable within the superheated tables in the rows that correspond to 500 degrees Celsius to find two specific enthalpy values that are above and below 3100 kilojoules per kilogram and interpolate to find the pressure of the stream. However, since we find that the specific enthalpy is almost exactly our value for 500 degrees Celsius and 4 megapascals, we can conclude that the pressure of the steam is indeed very close to 4 megapascals. If you'd like to watch other examples on transient systems, make sure to check out the links I left in the description of this video. You'll find the links to the other lectures of the thermodynamics course as well as the playlists to other engineering courses. Thanks for watching.